Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. Jackie, those are the coolest glasses. They're Gwyneth Paltrow glasses. They're aviators. I think my prescription is so heavy, I can't get aviators if I remember correctly. Fuck. Well, maybe new, maybe aviators are new now. I'll give it a try. Right, because I, I'm pretty blind. Yeah. When did you first get glasses? Hi, Lori. Uh, when Hi. did you first get glasses? <laughs> um, when, gosh, I have pictures going back to like first or second grade. Yeah. Pretty early. And uh, welcome home, Kyle. Hey, it's good to be back. Yeah. Are you going to do a rad oh, yeah. uh, about... Oh, well, about gonna, Japan, got to get some content mileage out of a thing in life. That thing, <laughs> you got to be able to write it off somehow. Oh yeah. Um, what's the name of your podcast again? Uh, exactly, this is rad. There we go. Hi, That's Jackie and Lori fans. Point. Yeah, go check. You it out. can hear about Kyle's travels on This Is Rad yeah. podcast. I'll talk all about the expat show, which was really fun. Oh, cool. Um, um, Jackie, we haven't done a podcast in like two weeks. I keep mentally having conversations with you. <laughs> checking in right. With Heaven you. forfend you actually call and burn those stories, but I hope you've oh. taken notes. <laughs> Jackie, I'm always saving it, but I forgot everything we talked about in my head for the last two weeks. I we know. had some good ones though. Yeah. I had some good ones too. I, for some reason, am super warm in this garage. Mm. Um so I'm a little fidgety. Look forward to it. Those who watch the YouTube, look forward to it. Uh, I've done a lot of sets this week. I've done yeah. a, a lot of shows, a lot yes. of uh, getting it together. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm at the punchline this week. So if you guys are anywhere in the Bay Area, come to the shows, please. I, you know, uh, yeah. I don't have much work coming up. I, I, it's very spotty. I'm just like, I, it always feels like this is the end of my career. Like, and I just saw, right. shot a special and I, and I'm not booked every single weekend in the summer, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the, um, that's the, um, that, that's that you do something big and then you have that big crash. Yes. After you do something like the first time I did late night TV, I was like, nobody actually we could go back every show every show yeah. that i ever got that was huge i got to go to aspen the hbo comedy festival in 1996 you guys it was the biggest thing in my i got to wait 96. before that i did yes. comedy on the road with john biner uh in 1994 and let me just tell you something every time the the, the crash after that of certain that it was going to change everything and yeah. then it did yeah. Jackie, I will say my comedy on the road was uh, I murdered. And I'm still upset that I have not been rewarded adequately. <laughs> for performance. I got one word to say about my comedy on the road. Wooden. <laughs> uh, I was a little stiff and uh, not. I was legit. I, I think I've told this story to you before, but I was yeah. literally wearing my brother's old suit coat that I had to roll back the sleeves. Yeah. Because I didn't have, because uh, I am a tiny ghetto child, and I had <laughs> no, I had one, it was my corporate outfit, mm -hmm. which was a bodysuit that had a lot of cleavage. I used to have a headshot of it. Uh, my brother's suit coat, and then a pair of black slacks. Remember the word slacks? slacks? Of course slacks. You got to wear your slacks. Jackie, you, you wear your like a little sex pot, a little honey pot on the road. <laughs> You're a woman comic. You must own slacks. <laughs> <laughs> um I had, I had lipstick on I had the um I, I did it in Hawaii and I had a joke about what Hawaii. yeah my comedy in row was on in Hawaii Kevin Kadoka, Karen Anderson it was like a Bay Area we just went west I mean wow incredible so uh wait west yeah okay so um uh the the joke was I I forget how I get into it, but, but somebody, we're in Hawaii, if someone calls my mom a howly, and my mom okay. goes, well, howdy yourself. <laughs> when I tell you it killed, it killed. <laughs> I did mine at Zany's in Nashville, and wow. I had to pay for my own air. Oh, my God. <laughs> felt pretty. Felt, pr oh. felt, it felt pretty show busy. Not going to lie to you. It felt exactly like me doing the Mueller run the week before. <laughs> um, but, um, and I didn't know who John Biner was. So we, right. we all had to line up 
and shake his hand. And what everyone said in front of me was, I'm such a huge, I love that. <laughs> and oh, so yeah. when I got to him, I was like, I'm such a huge fan. I love your show. I lied, that, Lori. You know what? We all lie. And that's what I worry when people say that to us, like young comics. I Oh, I listened to the podcast. I'm like, I've told this lie. All right. You want <laughs> to second tell it to me. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, I, uh, uh, I'm trying, when I'm looking back, I'm looking back to see, um, what shows I've done since we recorded. Cause it was a couple of weeks ago and well, yeah. here's the thing is, right. uh, it was so long ago that I think, uh, so I was in Philadelphia. I wasn't that far ago. I think I just did a flappers and yeah. then I had an April Macy lunch. Did I tell you about my April Macy lunch? No. And I recorded two tiny victories with Laura House. Um, because uh, uh, Annabella. her co host Max Fun, Annabella. oh, Annabella, Annabelle Gerwig, yeah. Annabelle Gerwig, that's it. Uh, she's taking a break, not mm -hmm. for any, not for any reason. She just wanted to lie down for a month, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, or she might have other work, I, th I forget what it was. Uh, Laura told me that it was, uh, it was other work anyway. <laughs> so I did two tiny victories, that was super fun. So you and Laura are practicing for my death when she could swoop in. And she told me you get Laura show. She said you already did one that you've already substituted for Annabelle before True. practicing we, for my demise. Guys, we have contingency plans. That's the important thing you should know. They're We're never looking for break. age appropriate women comics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> To step into the shoes. Laura's yes. my um, running boat too, so it's pretty unanimous. <laughs> it's uh, so um, yeah. And then I um, what was the other thing? I just fucking I did Moon Tower. If you're searching for shit to talk, yeah, about, please tell Moon me Moon Tower because that's what that was the thing that was exciting. It was really fun. There were a ton. You know what I loved about it? Um, there were so many female comics there. I never once felt like the only female comic. And I realized I frequently felt like that at festivals, you know, or one or two, there's like one. Yeah. It was just like so many that you never, I don't know. It just, you just, it felt nice. I really liked at, it. At all levels as from what yes. I looked at from the, yeah. fr fr from the, from the lineup too. So yeah. good work, good work, Colleen or whoever's doing the booking over there. Yeah, it was it was really fun. And uh, I did. Let's see. I did two shows at the new Cap City, um, which hopefully I can work. Right. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. What, what you inspired by I, going there. Uh, um, and, yep. But it was it's um, the new one is like it's it's about 20 minutes away from downtown. It's still, I think, technically in Austin, but it's a drive. Yeah. And um, it's in the it's in. It's in part of like, it's it kind of like in a Grove slash Americana part of, that's brand new. Okay. Like it's down Weird. the street from a Louis Vuitton. It's like, okay. it's got a lot of upscale stores and then people living in apartments above them. Kind of like, oh, yeah. what's going at near Flapper at uh, way more expensive, you know? Right, right, dude, the multi-use building, yes. Yes, which I kind of, I, it's, you know, it, it, it that's actually good, but it seemed to only be happening in very wealthy if I, people right. I would love that to happen in Van Nuys on Van yes. Nuys Boulevard, uh, yes. which they keep saying they're going to put a subway in. And I was like, all of Van Nuys Boulevard are like abandoned buildings. Right. Uh, there's right. just a lot of abandoned businesses and stuff like that. And then there's a couple yeah. of businesses. And I'm like, OK, uh, this is a friend, uh, a, a comic we know, a friend of yeah. mine. Uh, and she told she sent me. And I might have told this story as well. I'm interrupting your story. I'm so sorry. You will. I will circle back. Yes. Okay. We I have know. time. Yeah. So uh, that person has a friend who's dating a billionaire, and she sent me a picture from the billionaire's bathroom. Oh. And I and I sent her back a text going, first of all, never say those words out loud. And second <laughs> of all, if you get to meet him, ask him if I can borrow two hundred million dollars and fix homelessness in Van Nuys, because uh, he won't even miss it. Okay, so uh, so the Cap City is is it in the bottom part of apartment buildings? No, no, no. It's next. It's it's in that. It's in a giant neighborhood like that. So like, oh. if you live there, you could like pop downstairs, get a three thousand dollar purse, and then go to to my, to a comedy show. I mean, it's very convenient for <laughs> needs. Um, but the room <laughs> is incredible. It um I the lower room I just did a ten minute set on the low the big room uh you know like part of a tag team set or whatever and, okay uh, 
uh, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. It's like a kill wow. a kill center. Okay, it's got people a balcony above. It's got you know people below. It's just and it's the way it's it's kind of like it's not spread way out. It's like up. So it's just laughter hitting you from from way above and and at your feet. It's nonstop. You know. So it is literally just material. set up perfectly, right? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's set, set up. Yeah. Perfectly. And then uh, the upstairs room, I did, they have a little tiny room. Everyone's got like a, their own YooHoo room now, which I love because- the, Well, that's, that's Grossman. That's Grossman's uh, going, well, I'm gonna- Oh, really? Yeah, okay. he has them in all the heliums. Okay, so this one was great. It's called the red room, even though it's blue, let's be honest. Uh, there's like a giant blue curtain in the background. And uh, Ariel uh, Elias was opening for me. She's the one who was on stage and someone threw a beer can, a beer at her. And she, she caught it? it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. She opened for me. She is so funny. I mean, she was That's really so funny in that moment. And her Kimmel set was great. But she has, this, she has some really long bits about single topics. Which to me, that's a mark of a really good comic. It is not one, 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 one. It's like you, you you took the time and made a story out of it with great jokes. Right, and and both can be done well. Uh, yeah. It's just yeah. uh, I and and this is entirely pr personal preference. Is I enjoy more storytelling stand up, uh, and I do more storytelling stand up. But I do, but a well crafted one liner. I'm just backpedaling, but you, I know what you're saying. Yeah, that's yeah, so yeah, cool yeah. that I, she does that. Yeah. yeah. So she start, So she starts a topic, and I'm like, okay, she got a couple jokes, and usually that's when a lot of comics are like, all right, I, you know, took two off of this chicken thigh, and I'm moving on, and she just keeps going. And uh, it, anyway, it was very, she had very well done, very funny, and um, I was, you know, I liked, I enjoyed watching her, and then I did like an hour and eight. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I'm yeah. So I have plenty of stuff to cut, you know. Where and uh, anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, it was it was a really fun show. That's what I'm That's saying. That's awesome. Oh, and then my okay. So this this girl who's now a full woman who's like three years younger than me, my sister's age or four years younger than me, Mary. I used to babysit her in my old neighborhood that was raised where and now they put condos there at the Walt Pleasant Hill Bart Station. We can talk about, I'm still angry about that. But um, so she, I used to babysit her and uh, she came to the show um, and the next day she's like, oh, you should go on a walk near Ladyburg Lake, um, Ladyburg Lake and, and walk among the yum yum trees. I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. So it sounds it like a there. lot of amazing words. Yes. Right. So I, I, I texted like some ladies that were out. I'm like, does anyone want to go walk amongst the yum yum trees? And Maria's like, yeah, let's do it. So we're walking and and first we take a lift there because it's pretty far. And I'm like, hey, do you know what a yum yum tree is? The lift guy's like, ah, I've lived here 80 years. I have no idea. And then we're walking and I'm like, this must be a yum yum tree. But, you know, the person I, I said it to someone, they, oh, I'd never heard of that before. And then on the, the way back to the hotel, they don't know what a yum yum tree is. And I'm like, these fucking Texans are so ignorant about their own, you know, Mary <laughs> moved there from California. She knows what a yum yum tree is. So I take a picture of the trees and then I'm like, Mary, is this, this is a yum yum, right? Because this is the ma majority of the tree we're walking under. And she's like, oh, I don't know. That's just what I call those trees. I'm like, what? <laughs> Oh my God. That's I, hilarious. Yeah, like an official name. And I really worked hard to find out because I was trying to find out the local fauna and nature. And it's just her nickname for a certain tree. Two things. It reminds me of when my dad told me that there were the, 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 the over half of the Politburo was Armenian. <laughs> and wow. not ever. No Armenians on the Politburo ever. In all Russians Soviet always. Union? Yeah. What? In the Soviet Union? In the oh Soviet Union. God. Yeah. At no time. I, and I embarrassed myself in front of a poli sci professor. And um, so, but you were talking to a cabbie, so I think it's okay. Right, right, right. And, uh, and the second thing, Maria called me and told me what a great time she had on that walk. Yeah, it was fun. It was, it was really pretty. We were just chatting and stuff like that. But uh, that's what yeah. she, she said. It was great. She was like, we talked about other things than comedy. And I was like, <laughs> don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> no. Um. So let's talk about meeting billionaires. I think yeah. I'm a billionaire. Um, so, oh my gosh. So I had, um, 
I was online on Twitter as I am, and I'm seeing people talk about Daryl Lennox, and I was like, oh no, did he die? And it turns out he did die. Do you know Daryl? Who is he? No. He's a comedian. Oh, he was an I American saw his name. Comic. Yeah. He moved to Canada, and uh, I worked with him in the Middle East during the Gulf War. And there's my, one of my favorite comedy stories ever is a Daryl Lennox story, where we were in Bahrain. Have you ever been to Bahrain? Not offhand. I can't remember. Okay. I don't think so. So it's the only, at the time, it was the only country in the Middle East you could drink alcohol, right? So okay. when any troop, like of any nationality, got to Bahrain, they immediately got hammered. So you can imagine the shows were horrific, right? Oh my God, right. So, and our show there is in the daytime outside and the stage is picnic tables. It's like nothing, there's no way this can be a fun show. The troops are drunk during the day outside and we're on a picnic table. And me, Mo Betterman, Brian Diamond, John Boyle, it's like, a, you know, a bunch of Bay Area people. We, we're all bombing. Right. It's, and there's troops are shouting at us. They're getting their boo. Like they can't believe they've been subjected to this. <laughs> and then Daryl gets up on stage on the picnic table and somebody yells. Right. The picnic table is the stage. He, he yells, what you got, what you got that I don't got. Cause he's so mad that these comedians are talking. And right. Daryl goes a round trip ticket. And we almost had to run for our lives. Because <laughs> we're like, ah! and uh, they were stuck in the Middle East. It was so fucking great. And Daryl Lennox, my friends, Daryl Lennox. He was a guy and he was going blind. Like he lost, I, I listened to his WTF again, Mark posted it. And, and um, you know, he had always had like eye problems. Like he had massive glasses and stuff, you know. And uh, so I guess he he lost the sight in one eye and was going blind. He had a lot of health shit, you know? Yeah. Uh, and one of those old school, like, has a, a lot of history of, like, fraud. He was, I guess he was sued because he said he, he had an agent at, I think, WME or whatever, and was on Arsenio and he hadn't been. I'm like, what? Who sues for that, you know? Right, right. You just, you don't tell anyone you fell for that. That's the oldest. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So here's the thing. Like my experience was, with him was always great. He never, he always, and this is back in the day when people weren't even conscious of treating female comics, like, you know, fellow comics. He always did. He was always super cool and respectful to me and nice. And yeah. I only had good feelings about him and good, good experiences with him. And uh, I was sorry to hear that he passed and stuff. So I, I posted that story on Twitter. And then um, I think as a result, Marin just like, hey, you want to open for me at the Ice House uh, on Thursday? So I did. It was like, you know, I've had a couple Ice House spots cancel, uh, like a slew of them because they just rent, they just were like, or we're only booking like big headliner shows and uh, no more spot shows or something, you know? Right. So I hadn't been to the big room and, um, uh, oh, did you get to do it? Yeah. It's, I mean, they changed it a lot and there's this, this back area called the VIP area with a, a full on bajillion dollar chandelier. <laughs> the comics are hanging out. Oh my God. What? You did not have, you could just put a mini fridge in there. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> but it's gorgeous. It, it's kind of interesting because like you can see the show it's like for vips to watch the show like wealthy okay maybe lakers i have no idea because the lakers own the ice house now yeah um but it the thing is is the comic can't hear the laugh like there were women in that room that were watching a show through the glass window crying at marin and he didn't even know it you know what i mean yeah so yeah. in a way it's like Ugh, but whatever i guess i guess that's the only downside of that for the comic but it was yeah. just, oh go ahead oh, sorry go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's it's still the same ice house in terms of the laughs. It's great. It, it's that's it's it, a, yeah. I've always enjoyed that room. And then yeah. I met Jerry or Johnny Bus afterwards. He was hanging out, so I got a pick with Johnny Bus. Wow. So I guess I'm gonna be in that you know that new um <laughs> the whatever the HBO or Showtime series about the <laughs> the Lakers in the uh, 70s and 80s. I guess I'll be in that one day. Is Johnny Bus uh, the sport ball guy who bought the club? Yes, he's he's okay. the he's one of the kids of the original owner, Mr. Bus. That's what we call him in the sports world, Jackie. And um no, he's very nice. I mean, 
it was it was really fun and i, I, was, I hung out with someone named train i call him mr choo choo hey anyway i don't know why <laughs> I don't know why either. I, I put I to, to sleep again, like a rabid animal. It's I true. have to disassociate <laughs> myself from your remarks so I can have a career. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, Estia turns out has a feed from the club in Vegas to her <laughs> office in New York. Oh my god! So uh, <laughs> she can watch there. They record them. She can watch them all the time if she wants. Did you, did you do go to Vegas already? I'm going to Vegas tomorrow. It'll be the, the day this comes out. I'm going to Vegas. Seven days. God. Seven days, 14 no pressure, shows. Jackie. 14 opportunities to be scrutinized by the club. 14 book. shows. And uh, I don't know anyone who's on that show. Actually, I've met Mark Cohen, but uh, and he's the house MC. But that's all, right. all I know. He's like, a, he's been around for a while. He's, I think he's older yeah. than us for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, and, uh, and then. Comic. I don't right, long time comic. Oh, here's. A friend of ours is doing something because uh, she needs stage time. Right. And I've just typed that into the chat. I see. I see. <laughs> and I'm sad for her. And I wish to find her more work. Let's find her some work so she doesn't have to do that. Okay. Well, um, we'll have to do it in a subtle way. Uh, because, oh, for sure. Because I think yeah. she actually likes that person. Um, yeah, I think so too. I'm just, uh, I'm appalled that. Um, well, here's the good news, I guess, is the reason that we're not all booked every single weekend, you, me, and this person, is there's a ton of really funny fucking comics that True. are really well. So it's, it's, and it's yeah, and Rob Schneider has every week booked, you know, at, at least it's like uh, other funny people. Right. I, I was looking at the lineups around Vegas. Bill Burr is doing a couple of shows. Wow. Um, and so I like Nate Craig a great deal um and um not as much uh so the <laughs> but the I'm but i'm willing to hang out with nate and, and 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 bill never i mean bill's always distantly polite to me so right right <laughs> it's fine um yeah, yeah. i think probably not, it, same here and probably when someone gets to that level of fame if you we weren't if you weren't already tight with them it's not gonna happen so yeah yeah it's yeah. uh or if or if you were okay tight and they became hugely famous yeah. you're never going to get any tighter <laughs> Correct. yes you've achieved maximum and, tightness with this famous person right like that right, guy right, right, for yeah, me yeah, yeah. yeah that that guy and i we were we were you know we were good we would have an occasional uh adult beverage and he had me open for him a couple of times and then um and then he i mean monumentally blew up not that he didn't you yeah. know well, Jackie, it was like there was I you had a little crush on him in your pre Andy days, correct? Oh, easily, easily. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, the 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 standard. Uh, and this is this is not to belittle any any male comic I've ever had a crush on, but <laughs> I only have crushes on guys that I'm as funny as. <laughs> nice. I nice. do not have crushes on people that I think might be funnier than me, <laughs> and uh. That's shall i put a couple of yeah. should i put a couple of names i think these are oh, names please. you've seen before wait and, you, you um, wish you could have a crush on the, them but they're but funny. i cannot i cannot have a crush on either of those two oh people. i think you could have a crush on number two and number one absolutely not and <laughs> number one is yeah. incapable of love though as well so <laughs> he's married i think he's married he is married yeah, he is. to a comic and uh and they have uh children that look exactly like his little moon face oh my god and, uh, i love it i love it but, i would love to be on a show with him one day i have to move to uh, to do right. it but right well I, I speaking of, yeah speaking of going to europe i had lunch with april macy mm -hmm. who is doing a, a european run she's doing a pile of one-nighters all over europe and I was like, can I take you to lunch? And can you give me all that info? And Lisa she was like, Curry. Lisa Curry's in Europe right now. Oh, I should do that with Lisa too. Um, okay. Me. Everyone's going to Europe for one nighters. I know. And they don't pay that well. No. Uh, Cause April was like, she got the information from Tom Rhodes and she's like, they don't even pay him that well. Wow. And, um, but I think if I could get there, I could get some okay paying gigs in England, but, uh, that yeah. might pay for the trip but hilariously um i don't know if they bought or if they heard april and her husband they have a house outside of florence wow. is and he, uh is and she's like if you want to just stay there you can use it as your base and there's a, a shitty little fiat you could borrow 
Jackie, you can't put this information out there. People, she's going to be pummeled by comedians she's met once. She, well, here's the thing. April Macy has a pretty excellent set of boundaries. So, <laughs> uh, and if she doesn't, and if anybody, you guys, I'm just saying, I love her life. And yeah. she she travels for $11. She, no, uh, nobody works points like that woman. She works oh. all the points in the whole wide world. It looks like a bit of a grind. She explained how she did it. Oh, and really? it was a lot of sort of asking clubs for the front money on hotel for hotels. And then she books the hotels herself. Okay. And, uh, and then by the end of the year, she has like two weeks free anywhere. And nobody loves an infinity pool more than Safety Mouse, April Macy. <laughs> uh, April, so, uh, we traveled for 14 days together, April Macy and I, through the Middle East, uh, as she was constantly asking absolutely everyone if we were going to die. Uh, and I was like, well, stop wearing tight clothing. And uh, so oh, blame the victim, Jackie. Yes, entire at all times. And Alicia <laughs> Cooper asking asking any number of. I I remember we were in the airport in Oman, and Alicia Cooper, I, who I believe talked to her mom every day, wow, over Wi-Fi, over like WhatsApp or um, okay. Skype or something. It might have been Skype at the time, but she um, we we were in airport. We had two five hour layovers in in this Oman airport. Mm -hmm. uh, one day then the next day oh my god and alicia cooper you had you there was there was free wi-fi in the airport but you had to have a local cell phone number <laughs> so okay. she uh, alicia cooper kept going up to soldiers with like rifles and asking them if she could have their cell phone numbers oh my god and i was like you are like gibraltar on steroids uh it is she was the biggest set of cojones Rocket i've ever gibraltar met Gibraltar on steroids <laughs> Yeah, it would be like balls. Uh, I, I literally, I, I, my admiration for her was uh, just epic, is what I'm saying. It was amazing. I got it, Jackie. I got it. Hey, um, I got a, I, I got a good sound exchange this month. I'm still. I, ch I checked my thing. Nothing. Nichols. Nichols. Nothing. They're not playing a single track off of anything. I uh, uh, the, the, the set I recorded at the Comedy on State that uh, Blonde Medicine released. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, yeah, that Maybe. they he he made a deal where it's exclusively on Sirius. Wow, and and that they started paying it. Um, they started paying That's it, th playing it three months. That's not even staycation. Oh, no, no. It's called, I, it's... I believe it's called. I believe I named it. This is messy or something. I don't know what the hell I named it, but wow. uh, yeah. So I wonder if I could get I, my masters from. 800 pound and give them to blind medicine if you yes okay so he had an yeah, edit so, sorry right, you guys right. missing out on something but that's okay. uh, what i will say this is uh, it's literally it's about getting masters i want to get all my masters back from everybody from and it's not that that dan at, at stand up isn't doing good or 800 pound gorilla can do anything with my with my audio but it's been a couple of years and but to do that i literally need we have to have a lawyer send a thing a piece of paper and with 800 pound gorilla if you want to get it out before the the contract is over um and i know a couple of people that have done that um you need a decent lawyer no, <laughs> so they they have an obligation to do their job and <laughs> they did it well that's that's why people got it back but I because got part of, part of the contract is distribution and there is none so oh, it might you know what that's not true i think it's on youtube and that's and that's their defense they've distributed to youtube fuck and so they have uh three more years of my album and four more years of my two videos that i gave them i gave them both of my specials I'm a genius. Have we thought about somehow canonizing how smart I am occasionally? Jackie, Any. we're we dude, we do the hard thing, which is stand up on stage and make strangers laugh. We also got to become recording engineers and contract lawyers too. I can't yes. do it all. The law part is actually uh yeah. So uh I feel like we should take a break. Kyle. Yep, I was just about to. All right. And now I feel, these are things that I feel. <laughs> I feel that we should talk about our comic of the week. Lauren. Yes. 
Catherine Blanford, who I don't even know. I didn't even know her till she popped up on my Instagram. Why is this? This keeps happening. I'm like, who the fuck is this? They're a full headliner. <laughs> and she's not even Canadian. She's not even Canadian. She's from Atlanta or something. Oh, why do we not know her? I don't it's, know, uh, but she's very funny. That's awesome. What's her handle? Oh, she's only on Instagram, it appears. It's, it's Catherine Cath Blanford. Yes, Catherine with a K. Uh, spelled, who spells her name this way? Catherine. It's not, <laughs> it's not like, Hep, it's not, Hep, Hepburn has two A's and this is a, a and an E in the middle. It's like Kath, Princess Catherine, uh, Catherine of Wales, but with a C, a K instead of a C. I T S K A T H E R I N E B L A N F O R D. Yes. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, by the way, people that aren't on Twitter, I saw Kelly Carl. By the way, uh, follow her, book her, make her Great. famous, and then tell her to let me open for her. So, um, comic of the week, Catherine. Yes. Blank. Catherine. So, yes. I know I, saw, I, I, I saw, text them like, who is this? <laughs> and every like all the southern comics are like, she's my best friend. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know what like right. comedy is people are growing. It's like these full gardens of comedians that uh, if you go in the house for one minute, you go out, there's five new sunflowers out there at full height. <laughs> right uh here's what i have to say if uh because i was talking to Ke kelly carlin the other night yes. uh george carlin's daughter also a very funny actress and uh writer herself Is she here's a her show on sirius i believe so yeah but um, that's amazing sirius is uh you know that's a hard place to stick at you know I, uh, I don't know. Someone ch uh, someone check and tell me later. But I'm going to tell you this. Okay. Uh, the, one of the reasons I'm not on Twitter a lot is because I can't, the way the algorithm shows me the people I follow, it's not showing me the right stuff. Right. Right? right. So um, literally, Kelly Carlin texted me and said, if you type, if you go to search on Twitter and type yeah. the word filter colon follows, no space, Filter colon follows hyphen. It looks like it's a space than hyphen. Filter colon replies. And then hit the latest tab. You get everyone you actually follow. And so it's a weird coded hack. Filter and then uh, the colon. You don't write colon, right? Okay. No. All right. All right. Well, thank you. There we go. So that was fast. I saw her at Uncab. I did Uncab the other night. Yeah. I did Uncab the other night with like uh, just a murderer's row. And I I had spent the day baking with my mom-in-law because, uh, swear to God, sourdough starter's not dying on my fucking watch. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm not that psyched about it. Though I am psyched when there's fresh bread. That's exciting. Um, so I... Um, I get there late and I know it's such a murderer's road that she was going to want to put me up first. And I'm like, please don't put me up first. And she goes, Oh, I was going to put you up first. <laughs> and then there was this long pause and I go, can I not go first? And she goes, you can go second. You can go second. And the way she, the way Beth Lapidus does on cabaret is uh, she top loads it. Uh, usually. I mean, I always feel like, what, what did I just start? Why do I got to take the bullet here? But it was the yeah, new right. kid she put at the end. And he and he isn't new. Um, I, yeah. I'm spacing his name right now, but I worked with him at the Punchline last year. Uh, but a nice young man. And um, so Julia Sweeney went first. Ooh, wow. Yeah, she was fucking hilarious. Right, right. And then I went second. Mm -hmm. And then Kate Minucci went up. Oh, my gosh. And, and then Dana Gould went up. Jesus Christ. And then the new kid. Oh my and, God. <laughs> wow. but um it was it was super it was an amazing and i was trying i was trying some new stuff and you know there's there's something there oh my god beth lapidus wrote an end to my closer what oh cool yeah and i tried it last night you know how like somebody else writes a line and you try it and you can't yeah. get it out like you can't get it out right yeah i didn't get it out right but i'm gonna keep working it because it's <laughs> the greatest it's it's a nice button she, nice. she it's it's a perfect tag is it, a on the, it isn't damn it is it i know you always want it to be a callback it's uh 
it's because you know i'm closing on that new dick joke yes wait and um are you typing something i no. was gonna type it but then i thought it's i mean it's not it's just the perfect line that i wish i it's one of those lines that you're like well it's not hilarious except for it's hilarious mm -hmm. because it seems like it would be obvious and then it um and then, but it wasn't. It wasn't obvious to me. I had to get Beth Lapidus to write it. So, um, but she said it as we passed on the thing. And I looked at her and I was like, mine. Wow. I pointed, I pointed at myself and I was like, that's mine. I was like, that's great. Mine. You just need someone else's bird's eye view of your chunk. You know, you're yeah. too in it to see all the possibilities sometimes. You know? Yeah. It's just a little bit of a drone perspective. Yes. Someone else. Mm hmm um, oh, I was in Seattle. That's where I was when you were in Moon Tower. Were you at Laughs? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was great. And uh, uh, Awansio opened for me. She opened for me. Oh, nice. And she uh, is so good. I mean, she's always, she's been good for years, obviously, but uh, I love all of her new stuff. And it was super smart, super fun, and really loose, like second shows. Laughs is just doing MC, guesty regular feature person headliner okay. person i mean that's the same uh, time right no uh, the last time i worked there was pre-covid i think and it had it had I, there were like four comics in front of me everyone doing 12 oh, minutes oh right 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 and it was annoying tyson stop barking <laughs> uh so uh the uh so it was a great show it was a really fun show and i uh i ended up filling the room to, enough to get the bonuses again second second week in a row uh, where I got bonuses for filling the room. Yay. And so I told my manager, uh, my agent, uh, that I, you know, I was like, well, do you think this will help with the chains? And he wrote back, no. Oh. And then I was like, what, 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 did you just move the goalposts? <laughs> and uh, he did. Uh, but I don't think he moved them. He, uh, or he did, or some fucking thing happened. All I know is he said, you're, you're, you're selling out 200 a night. You're not selling out 400 a night. Jackie, what the fuck? <laughs> Doesn't that feel like the goalpost got moved? Yeah. I was like, okay, all right, okay. Um, I can tell you a funny story that Augie Smith told me. Augie Smith has the best road stories in the world. Okay. Crackers, Indianapolis. Right. Ruth Ann. Right. I never worked that room, so. Well. Resentful, please. Brad Williams. Yeah is working it it's the it's the it's their last club she had a hard she had a hard lockdown she had a hard war kill martin she had a real hard war sure and, uh, that's what happens when you don't work Lori kill martin <laughs> you have a hard lockdown. Got, you know how i got in at in indianapolis uh mm -hmm. snail mail i ran into her dad ruth okay. ann's dad at bob and tom and he told me he gave me her home address and said you should send her a letter and because uh, Captain Desperado over here really needed wants to work every club, I sent her a letter. Of course. And she called me. That's right. Uh, nice. Anyway. And so I worked there for a couple of years, and then lockdown happened, and I don't know. And then I worked. Whatever. But um, Brad Williams is working it. Downtown Crackers. Not long ago. I believe in the last two years. Um, the, uh, the guy featuring for him shows up at the green room and walks into the green room and there is a man there who is also a little person and he's just chatting they're just chatting and he's like how's it going i'm featuring and the guy goes oh great and then he's talking and in walks brad williams and, and brad goes hey nice to meet you nice to meet you he sits down he asks the feature how long he's been doing stand-up the guy goes about four years and he turns to the other guy and says how long you've been doing stand-up and the guy goes i don't do stand-up <laughs> Ruthann had brought him to the green room because he thought he was Brad Williams. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, and he was like, yeah, she just brought me in here. And I was like, okay, I don't know. I wow. just came to see the show. <laughs> and Brad's like, well, please do. Uh, let me show you your seat. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. That's yeah, weird. So I am going to Vegas tomorrow. Yay. Yes. Ron Vi Ron Vi is in town Monday, Tuesday. Okay. I I'm hoping to hang see Ron Vi uh, Wednesday through Saturday at the punchline, right? Maybe? Does he I hope so. He lives in Vegas, but I think he said he was thinking of going to Hawaii. 
oh, I guess I won't see him. Well, he'll, he'll, I mean, if I, for my sake, I hope he stays in Vegas. I hope he can think of my, my Howley joke about my mom if he's going to Hawaii. Oh my God, what a great joke that is, by the way. It really is. It's, and it's only workable there. But what a great... That work I put into a joke that was, is so local to a place that is a five hour flight away from me. Um, oh you know, uh, I, I, so at, at Moon Tower, um, we're staying at the Thompson Hotel, which is a really nice hotel. And then yeah. this uh, restaurant underneath called the Gray Market. And I'm going to call them out because people need to know. Okay. So, like it's, it, it's, you know, you can order, you know, breakfast there and stuff like that. And I would order toast. I ordered toast one morning and they brought me, I can't, the, the end of the, the, the piece of the bread right before the end. So it's like a lot of crust and it's tiny and it's cut in half. And that was like my $9 toast. And I was like, I, I said, this, this seems like the, you th- just threw the rest of the bread away. Like there's nothing, this should be in the garbage. And the waiter goes, oh, you're right. Like he just noticed it. Motherfucker, you brought it out to me. You saw it, okay? <laughs> then he brings out like a nice big old chunk of toast that's thick. Like you expect at a restaurant when you're paying big money for toast, right? Right, right. So I'm like, all right, happens once. So I go back the next day and order toast again. Same fucking thing, same waiter. I'm like, hey, this seems small again. And he brought out another, but he didn't bring out a big one this time. He brought out a second, the uh, the pear the other end of the round bread. I'm like, what? Why? It's what, interesting why? to me. Why I'm don't you kidding. travel with a loaf of bread? You're spending $9 on toast. I like, um, well, yeah, but I don't have a toaster in my room, Jack. <laughs> right, it's true. I'm Fair enough. But that's, I mean, but that is your preferred breakfast, a piece of toast? Sa- nice, uh, on the road? Chunky sourdough toast with, with jam and butter. Yeah, that's nice. I like I, it. Okay, I just made a loaf of sourdough bread. The next time I make bread, I'm bringing you a loaf of bread because I'm not supposed to eat bread. Oh. Uh, I'm not supposed to eat grains. I'm not supposed to eat dairy. And I'm not supposed to eat uh, sugar. And guess what's happening? I'm eating a lot of those things. Those things are being eaten. I would never uh, go to a doctor who told me those things. <laughs> That's malpractice. I have not been back. I will give you that. <laughs> um. So uh, a Judy Gold was there. It was fun. Lisa Ann oh, Walton was there. It was just really, it was, it was a lot of fun backstage. Um, so this, this week I, I did a little TikTok about Steven Crowder and uh, it's doing really well. So much so oh, good. that I'm like, oh, maybe I can make this into a bit. And so I've been kind of playing around with it on stage as a bit. It just started out as a tweet. <laughs> this is the most internet uh, se- uh, description ever, but um, yeah, like uh like I don't know. Yeah, it seemed like over a hundred thousand views, very like within a day, right? Which is big for me. That that gets you from it's having two hundred in the room to two fifty, Jackie. Yeah, right. When well, and here's what I'm doing: I'm reposting uh, on TikTok right now to get through the shadow banning. Yeah, and I'm almost, uh, I'm almost through it. I think. I'm getting Sorry, I was just getting hundreds of, um, and now I'm back to getting sort of thousands, do which you, is okay. Are what, Do you like take the original one down or do you just, no. what do you do? do you no, you're also, again? yeah, just share it again. And then if anybody That's gives me any, else. nobody's given me any guff ever about it. So I guess I win. And, um, I did the improv last night. I did a Saturday night, 7 PM set. Okay. I went up first. I had an 8 p.m. set. Um, well, I just had to be back here. I didn't have a set. I told them I had an 8 p.m., but it was a hard out. I needed to be somewhere at 8 p.m. And so I think it was Jay Williams was hosting. And um, oh, and he was he had already seen that he's already seen the Guardians movie, the new mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And he said it was great. And I would been really looking forward to it. And then Pratt talked uh out loud into uh some sort of reporter's face and that person wrote down what he wrote here's the thing about some actors he's like an evangelical or something and he's right tr- and an asshole and divorce got or cheated on his wife and then divorced her they were together for like 15 20 years oh he, right was he married to yeah. Anna Paris? They had i believe so together, and now he's yeah yeah schwarzenegger's daughter he right? was fine 
he was fine office he was fine yeah all of a sudden he's an action star it's not fine anymore now he thinks his uh dick is hard all the time and everybody wants in on it uh but what he did (laughs) well i think it worked out for him yeah um but the um but i i guess he said out loud that he's been trying to talk because uh james gunn into putting the f word into the guardians movies the whole time he's been trying to do that and because i guess the third movie someone says the word fuck Mm. and i was like are you nine uh the best comment i heard response to that was someone said i don't think he's a star lord i think he's an edge lord (laughs) and it made me laugh uh quite hard anyway so but i did the improv last night with uh, jay williams introduced me and i got to try i and you get to do 15 minutes it's nice i like how they're running the weekend i never i don't get a lot of sets yeah and uh and i think i was the only woman again but um but it was it's i mean it's great when it happens yeah i i have i'm on two produced shows there tonight so i'm getting the feeling that they're the weeknights are mostly produced because it's okay for those nights and i never get anything unless i'm doing permanent records tonight i'm doing a 7 p.m over but i got a pack i'm bringing a boatload of merch because 14 shows uh we'll but i but i pinged um the uh the, the liaison for the the comedy seller to ask if i could bring merch and no response i'm bringing merch anyway because from vegas i'm flying directly to north carolina to do to work oh. with maria for three nights yeah and she doesn't have any merch and the greatest thing about maria's uh audience members is they would love to throw 30 dollars at me because they can't throw it at her <laughs> and uh, i should just put up something going you can buy my stuff or here's maria's venmo <laughs> and uh just as a tip um i did another packet this week yeah how that i don't know submit? okay yeah it's like click send on it another week ruined uh as it like you you here's what you look at the like the what they want and you're like all right i got this right and you start a little yeah. bit and then about two days in, you're like oh i don't got this uh and then it then it's like then you're lowering your brain into just this vat of potential punchlines, and then it's it's ruins your hair and uh you can't sleep and then you send it and you're like it's not good enough and it sucks uh so that i didn't go through that <laughs> so many, you, many well times. you went through all the stages of grief on yeah. your own writing <laughs> packet um. since the end of conan many many times i i mm-hmm. do feel sometimes i feel like i'm never going to have another writing job again and then i'm like what what happens what i mean i don't know what to do you know there isn't enough stand-up work there's nothing there's not there's not enough work i don't yeah i don't know how to no i know i'm just no. telling him it's yeah like, you're just saying my income has gone down 70 75 percent yeah. it's like astonishing yeah you know so i don't know going, hopefully yeah. uh i would love here's what i like just writing jokes i i'm not i would love to just write jokes on mm-hmm. a show that wants mm-hmm. jokes yeah it seems like a dream life to me it, it mm-hmm. was i had that dream life i yeah, want it i want more <laughs> are we at 45 take another break can be, yeah <sighs> okay let's take another break um yeah i'm gonna even say more than 75 percent. it's been a massive reduction that i've been dealing with here it's true uh i lost uh, yeah the income is is my income is because of all that sound exchange money it's uh it's a third of my income so yeah and then i don't know and then the other third oh yeah things are down things are but I will say that um, things are are better. Like I'm, we're figuring out how to how to orchestrate the house with with Andy's mom and stuff. So yeah, that's that's coming together. It's only taken yeah. ten months. <laughs> yeah, almost eleven to figure out. Um, and I and I put the garden in, and I saw two flowers on my tomato plant. So oh, nice. So life is good. Life is some in some ways good. It's great. I was, um, yes. I'm just worried about it. And then of course there's a potential strike that might start the day this drops, which is like yeah. 97% approval from WGA. Yeah. Something like that. 
the other thing is scary is like at least the way things are now you're like okay say i you know i'm gonna finish this pilot then what it doesn't get bought <laughs> like it be i mean i'm talking pre-strike like there's a mini room the way things are are now even if in the best case scenario it's still shitty that's the scary oh. thing. if the strike happens and it fixes this stuff then it's kind of exciting to be to have a to have a pilot in that direction you know mm -hmm. but right now the way things are like you read about people that are somebody a writer was on the bear which was like really funny a great show won a ton of awards and you know the person's like on food stamps or something it's like what no it's yeah. it's really bad so yeah. um i don't know i i uh, so much anxiety jackie i did listen i get it i have uh i did invest in colorful kn95 masks i've decided oh that's right you're you, yeah you thought you'd bring it up a notch you got one handy yeah well, uh, yeah. well okay here are my green ones right here these are gorgeous um oh aren't they pretty oh, that's but a pretty I got, color i got flower flower ones i got uh tie-dye ones and i got plaid they look really cool. So I'm just going to try to match them with my outfit. So when I come into the club with a mask on, I don't look like um, I'm judging people. I look like I'm trying to be just have fun with a mask. I think, yep. you, I don't know, because clearly I'm going to be the only one still doing this. I, yeah, there's not a lot of people doing it. And it's uh, I went to the dentist yesterday. Yeah. And I and they have a sign. You can't come in without a mask. And I'd forgotten my mask in the car. And so I walked in and I, no one was wearing it. And yeah. so I said, I, I, so I, I said to the woman not wearing a mask work who checked me in, I'm so sorry. I forgot my mask. And she said, I can give you a mask. And I said, you know what? I'll take one. And then, and then the other two people waiting to go into the, to the doctor were like, can I have a mask? And then we all put on masks and, um, uh, yeah. and then we didn't catch a cold from each other. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, at the very least, I, uh, so. you know, I, I'm still, whatever, I'm still have a air, air purifier when, when I'm headlining, you know, I brought mm -hmm. one to, uh, Austin and I only brought it to the one show I was doing an hour at and the rest of the shows were shorter things. So I squirt my, you know, Israeli stuff on my nose and, uh, cross my fingers, you know, hope my vaccines are working so far so good, but, yeah. uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's uh, it uh, feels like this is the way going forward for a long time unless they unless they come up with a stronger vaccine or a better way to treat long COVID. You know, I don't know. I don't want to. Yeah, because COVID doesn't seem to be going away. No, it's uh, it's it's here and it's going to be always here for a long time unless we figure out a way to vaccinate ourselves against it completely. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I just don't want to get it. Uh, I don't know what's coming down the pike. We don't know what it's going to do to you 10 years down the line. That's the scary thing. And we're, you know, all of us are actually guinea pigs. They'll find out on us how bad. <laughs> yes. Yes, they will. It's um. so. All I know is uh, I'm going to come home, I yeah. think, on the 11th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I am home. Oh, I'm going to. um. My nephew's uh, bar mitzvah uh, the weekend after that's in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have, uh, then I'm home for, I think another week and a half. And then I'm in, then I'm in Milwaukee, actually, I believe. Me yeah. Too. I'm doing, oh no, I'm doing an uh, immigration benefit up in the Bay area uh, with a, a killer lineup June 1st. Yeah. And, and from the Bay area, I'm flying to, to Milwaukee for the second and third uh to do laughing tap and then i'm gonna hang out with my with my family in milwaukee for uh four or five days and then i'm doing lincoln lodge on the ninth i would desperately like everyone in chicago to buy tickets if you know anybody in chicago yeah please come to the lincoln lodge show and tell everyone you know because it'd be great if you added another show if we if we got enough people um I don't know. I don't know if it's 200 people or 450, but whatever it is, I know. we should totally um, fill that room because I, 
uh, would like, because essentially Lincoln Lodge is pretty much just paying for the rental car for the week and a half. Guys, we need to fill these rooms. So you guys need to start coming yeah, out to our shows. So, so we appreciate any help that you have. All these right-wing um, assholes fill their rooms. Why can't we? We got better jokes. I'm, I'm guarantee it. We have better jokes. That's We're what I was going to tell you. I tweeted a joke yes. or I tweeted, a, it was pithy. Was yeah. it a joke? And, uh, and then I got a text from a friend of mine who is famous to me for writing the most convoluted, obs- it's like Obscura Atlas, like it's yes. like the most obscure references in the world. You're just like, it makes my Neville Chamberlain joke look like <laughs> uh, standardized. <laughs> and, <airplane food. laughs> yes. And he was like, are you going to add uh, and I tried to add it last night and it didn't really, cause it goes with my, um, I made a bees bit mm-hmm. and it's just, cause did you see that, so, that, that some guy proposed a bill in a state legislator legislator to get rid of no fault divorce, which I had to look well, that's up. What I was, that was my Crowder thing. That's my Crowder, uh, rant. Oh, that. that was your Crowder. Okay. Yeah. Um, Here's what happened with Crowder. I didn't know who he was. And for a, for a hot second, I thought it was Trey Crowder. And oh. I'm so glad it's not Trey Crowder because I like Trey Crowder. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's the liberal redneck. Yeah, he's great. And he's great. He's genuinely yeah. super smart and funny. Yes. And then he put, and, and he leans into his Southern accent because that accent's real, but he leans into it when he does those, those videos. You got to. It'd be like me leaning into the Fargo thing. So, yeah. um, but um, he, yeah. So what were you saying? So, so mine was just that, that, that there's, and, uh, I'm, I'm essentially looking for people's three favorite horrible bills that have been tried. They're mostly about abortion right now. Right. Grand. But some of them are genuinely just about women's rights. Yeah. Like the one where no fault divorce means that you don't have to prove that there was infidelity. There doesn't nope. have to be a reason to get a divorce. You can just say, this isn't working. And like either this. person can say it. But yeah. in a pre no fault divorce world, if one person didn't want to get a divorce, you couldn't get a divorce. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that it had to be codified is banana land. Yeah. And it just recently that, that that's been on the books uh, until very, very recently, I can't, I, I want to say the last five years in England, in wow. Great Britain, wow. they just passed it. We've had it for at least, I believe, since the 70s or 80s. Yeah. Um, but like a like a guy might go, you you couldn't and and abuse used to not be admissible. Like hitting, like if, if your husband was beating you, wasn't admissible reasons yeah. to want Did a divorce. The, the Crowder tape where he's just emotionally abusive to his wife, who's like eight months pregnant with the twins. And he's telling her to go to the, like, apparently they have one car. This guy signed a multi-million dollar contract with the, the Daily Wire. That's so control wait, where's, issues. Where's the wire getting all this money. That's, that's really, I mean, I'm sure there's some dark money billionaire shit, but right. uh, no, it, it was like, bad stuff and there's a lot of guys going so you know he's just talking to her it's like oh that's that's emotional abuse and that's that uh that corners somebody in a place and you talk to somebody when they're pregnant with twins like that they are when you are that pregnant you are so fucking physically vulnerable to uh you know your body something happening and with twins what the fuck it was really bad um yeah so yeah, he's that awful guy. And I think he used to be a stand-up or he tried or something like that. He's one of those guys that couldn't pull it off. And they all they all think that they're so funny. Mm-hmm. Um, here's the thing about stand-up comedy. It's not easy. No. It's a it's a learned skill, my friends. And uh, you know, those first couple of years, none of us are very good. It's a rare, rare bird who's good at it right right out of the gate. And, and and not only just the good part on stage, but the staying in the business part, like we're doing right now, where it's yeah. like, all right, where's oh. how am I going to pay bills this summer with one week of work on the books, you know? <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, I am in May in Wisconsin. On May 18th, right. 
I'm in Oshkosh at the time. Oshkosh, we gosh, you gotta love it. Let me say it because Lyle will get pissed. <laughs> He's sending Lyle. me emails. It's at the Time Community Theater in Oshkosh on May is, 18th. It's a Thursday. Is it, is it spelled T Y M E? I don't T I M E. I, they know, if you live in Oshkosh, you fucking know where it is, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's a lot. We got time. I get, I have time to tell you this great story about the, the TYME. I'm not done with my sentence. Okay. I know that's why you jumped in. <laughs> All right. And then Friday and Saturday, I'm at the laughing tap in Milwaukee. Um, and so the 18th, I'm in Oshkosh and the 19th and 20th, I'm in Milwaukee. And if you're in Wisconsin and you're a fan of Jackie's, you should be a fan of mine. Or you can right. just hate watch me and tell me that you like her better <laughs> after the show because I'll be there selling shirts. Finally, the hate watch. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wonder, uh, there is part of me that wants to know, like because June 5th and 6th, like, is it June? Yeah, it's June. Like the first time I'm in San Francisco doing that immigration benefit with a Parna. Oh, and yeah. um, the lineup on this on this thing on the first is Banana Land. It's such a good. It's. I wonder who else is. I, I I've lost the thread of who else is in it, but it's not just a Parna. It's such a great lineup. Uh, though I always enjoy watching a Parna. She and is, uh, uh, she moved to L.A. I just saw her at the at Permanent Records. She was very funny. Right, and she's she's starting a, a show. She's starting oh, cool. a. I think at the Elysian. Nice. Uh, you know, Rory Scoble has a show there every Monday, and I kind of want to just because he's because he's given out well, he's given out sets. Oh, nice, cool. So I would there's there's part of me that just kind of wants to hang. Yeah, I you know you know I do stand up, which is the old which is literally uh I I feel very very I'm and granted I'm it's not luck it's forty years of doing stand up comedy, but uh that I don't usually I don't have to hang out so much. Uh, to get the sets right right uh i can just email and say here's some credits can i please have a set but that's i mean it's possible to still do it but okay so here's if lyle's listening and i believe he is i just want to say that if he has a thursday the 8th of june open in oshkosh a wednesday or a thursday oh wait no, are you seriously <laughs> we've already gone over an hour i want to get to the pool before it closes and you're making personal pleas to bookers about a single date on our podcast i think i have my um yeah and i'm looking at my book there's some problem with my calendar i gotta go Lori. i'm so sorry oh 